Joe, you've named your team. How confident are you that it's a team that will beat Australia in this first test? Well, I wouldn't have named it if I wasn't confident. Um, Fair point. Yeah, look, we, we're very excited as a group. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to obviously play the first test match here at Edgebaston. Um, we've got a very good record here as a team. Um, that does sort of count for nothing now as tomorrow starts. I think it's really important that we're very focused, very clear on how we want to approach this series that first day in particular. Um, but obviously feel very confident that this group of players is more than capable of winning this test match. No job for Archer. What was the thinking there? Yeah, I mean, Joff was obviously coming back from quite a serious injury. Um, we looked at the conditions and we made a decision what we thought you know, was best going to take 20 wickets here and also allows him time to to get absolutely ready and fit and, and make sure that he's got his workloads up and ready to go for later on in the series if, if he needs to make an impact. How far away do you think he is from that? Uh, that'll be monitored throughout the week. I think it's important that that's continuously mo continually monitored and that he's you know, um, absolutely fit and fresh and ready to go to offer something different if, if we need to go to that. Uh, in terms of the top order, you've moved up to three. Uh, why now? Why have you made that decision? Why? Because I think it's important um, that we spread the experience out. Get me gives me an opportunity to lead from the front um, as well. And I also feel now I'm in a place where I've got my head around dealing with the captaincy and my batting, being able to separate the two, and an opportunity to hopefully me to make an impact at the top of the order. Are you concerned about that top order at all? No, I'm not. Um, I think it's very exciting top order. Um, you now, Jason. I want Jason to go out and, and play in his own way, in his own manner. I think that naturally um, he has the ability to put any bowler under pressure at any given time. And um, I think that's very exciting. And, you know, I, I, I think the most important thing is that as a group we keep things very simple and we are very focused. And, um, you know, we continually work hard to make those big partnerships which contribute to winning. Sorry, just one more from me. Um, Tim Payne says behaviour doesn't lie. That's the motto they're using. Um, moving forward since the, the ball tamperers all came back. Uh, well, how have you found Australia's behaviour since they came over here this summer? Um, uh, absolutely fine. Um, we'll see how that unfolds throughout the, the course of this series. But to be honest, my, their behaviour doesn't really concern me. The, the thing that concerns me is that we go about things in our own way. And we know what we're about as a side and how we want to go about things. Um, and I think it's really important that we, we look after that and we don't get too wrapped up in how they go about playing their own cricket. Joe, generally um, England captains going back to the 19th century, I suppose, are defined by what they do or don't do in the Ashes. You're in a position of sitting there having just won the World Cup with, with an England cricket team, which has never happened before. So in that sense, it take the pressure off you, that in some ways, although we'll talk up the Ashes, it doesn't mean as much as it perhaps has done to other captains because you've got that in the recent memory, an event which did capture the public imagination. I think you speak to anyone that's captained England and is on the verge of an Ashes series um, to say that it doesn't mean as much as any other event. Um, I don't think any of them would, would agree. I think it's, it's huge. It's, it's a great opportunity. I think cricket in this country is probably at an all-time high. It's probably got interest that it's not had for a long time. Um, and we've got an opportunity as a team to, to make this summer a very memorable one. Um, and that's exciting, you know, to be involved in that, to have that chance, that carrot in front of us as a team um, is a really pleasing one. And it's very motivation, uh, a great motivator Sorry for, for the whole squad. But ultimately, it comes down to, to how we go about that, how we're going to break down Australia and how we're going to win enough games to win the series. Uh, I was just watching James Anderson dashing around in the fielding drills again. I'm sure he feels he's getting better at 37, but do you? Yeah, I do. I think he is someone that gen genuinely continues to improve. Um, he, You just have to look at his numbers in the last couple of years. Um, granted, conditions have suited him. Um, but he's absolutely made the most of it. He probably had his best tour of Australia as well in the recent past. He continues to find ways of taking wickets and build pressure on any given surface. Um, and he's a great leader of our attack. Um, you know, for someone at 37 to continue to keep improving is it's a great trait to have. It's great for English cricket and it's great for this group. Pass the mic to Rory and then we'll do uh, Chris.
Joe, um, Joss Butler said, I think it was in the immediate aftermath of the, of the World Cup final, not, nothing on a cricket field would ever phase him again after what you guys went through. Do you, do you feel similarly when this series heats up that that sort of experience of that final will see you right? I think and you look at, you look back at that final and everything that it threw at the group that played in it, um, those are experiences that you can hold with you forever. Um, ones that you can look back on fondly in years to come. But when it comes to actually playing, having been in those situations, um, someone like Joss and Ben who spent a long period out there under pressure, it must make you think differently. Um, and it'll be interesting to see that unfold throughout this series. But it can only be a positive. Um, and that's great for our group, you know, to have two senior players perform for long periods of time under the, you know, the, the biggest of, biggest scrutiny, the biggest pressure, if you like, um, in the white ball format. They've got a chance now to take that forward and take that into the, into the red the red ball stuff, into the Test cricket and into this series. And you know that can only be a positive for this this team. And just wondered, is, is Owen Morgan been in contact? Sort of said, you know, I've done my bit now. Over to you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure he's still celebrating somewhere, to be honest. Um, but no, he's he's obviously desperate for us to do well. He's been great for, with with me in terms of um, helping me find my feet as a captain, not just in the recent times, but you know, from the very start. And um, someone I always will look up to. I think he's a, he's a great man. He's a great leader, um, and you know he'll be as supportive as anyone else watching on from wherever he is. Hopefully, with a glass of red somewhere. Um, Joe, um, we had Tim Payne up here before you, and as, as well as uh, incorrectly quoting Winston Churchill, he, he claimed uh, that there were 15 more grounds in the world that have uh, are more intimidating than Edgebaston. I wondered whether you agreed with that. Um, well, I don't see this ground as intimidating. I think it's a great place to play cricket. I might see it from a slightly different point of view, but one thing that is for sure is um, the crowd here is you're very aware that they're in full support of England and that's great for us you know we we love coming here we love the atmosphere that, that this ground in particular brings you know we're very well followed wherever we go around the world and in England in particular for an Asher series um, so it doesn't really concern me how they are viewing it um, you know whether that's true or not you have to wait and see um, as the game unfolds but we're we're in a really good position where we know we've got full support and um, you know some of the the noise throughout that court uh, that that semi final um, it, it it was it was great to play in a game like that with that sort of atmosphere and I can see that being very similar this week. Will you spoke about trying to start the game well uh, here? How does that how do you, how do you do that? How do you practice for that? Especially given you got bowled out for eighty five on the first morning against Ireland. Um, I think you, as I say, you keep things dead simple, and you, you know make sure you've got a real focus on how you want to go about things. It'd be nice to win the toss um, if if opportunity if that happens. That's always a nice start to things, but ultimately it's you know it's breaking things down, and being really clear. Um, you know, embrace everything that comes with the start of a series, and and you know get in the battle, enjoy the. Um, the contest of, of an Ashes series, you know, whether that's with bat or ball, is have full confidence and um, and respect in yourselves and your teammates that you're more than capable of, of performing in, in that environment. And you know, I'm fully expecting us to be able to step up to that. Um, Joe, Australia have um, historically had either like a larger than life character or their best batsman or best player captain in the side. But now we have someone like Tim Payne, unsung, understated. Uh, so how do you size him up as a counterpart? Um, well, we, we know how we're going to try and get him out as a, as a batter. Um, and you know, I, I think it's, it doesn't really matter to us how he goes and captains his team. As I say, we've, we're very prepared. We've got some good plans in place in terms of how we want to counter Australia. But we're not really concerned about how they go about their business. That's for them to worry about, them to look after. Um, you know, I've got respect for them as a team. They're a fine test, test playing nation. Um, and they've got some very skillful players. Um, but ultimately, we just got to make sure that we go about it in our own way and look after that. Martin. Joe, you talked about the top order and about keeping it simple. Was there any temptation at all to keep the opening partnership that 
won the World Cup? No, I wasn't. No, I'm, you know, I, I think Roy's a very talented player. And um, granted, he'd probably be disappointed with the, the scores he made in the Ireland Test match. But you're looking at very extreme, extreme conditions there. And uh, of course, we didn't bat as well as we would have liked and that we can make improvements on that. But um, we found a way to win that game. You know, I thought the way that they approached it, second innings until I ran Joe out, um, you know, we were going about things in the right manner. Um, so I, th I think more importantly, if we as a, as a group can find ways of winning games instead of um, focusing on things that we've not quite got right in the past, it is going to serve us better. Um, the guys know how they want to go about their batting, how they're going to try and create big innings, which is going to contribute to us winning. But um, the pleasing thing is when we've found ourselves under pressure in the recent past, when we probably haven't got the scores we would have liked, a lot of the time we've come out and won the game because we have got very strong characters in the group um, and, and guys have stepped up under pressure when they've needed to. More Stephen, Ali, and then D. Um, Joe, at the back. Um, 18 months ago, you were quite a new captain in Australia on a tour that didn't go particularly well on or off the field. Can you just talk a bit about what you went through during those few months and how, sort of, personally that might motivate you to put things right this time around? Yeah, it was obviously a very frustrating tour. There were a number of things that went again against us leading into it as well. Um, we suffered a lot of injuries throughout the course of that tour as well. Um, but I think what we discovered there was, uh, as a group, we've we've learned a lot from it. Um, you look at where our bowling groups come to now, we've got a huge amount of variety. We've got different options to turn to. Um, as a side, we're very clear on how we want to go about things and play play the game. And for me as captain as well, it... It sort of proved to me uh, and sort of really planted the seed of how, how I want this team to look going forward. And I think since that moment, gradually over time, we've step by step improved. We've developed as a team. We've had the odd minor setback here and there, but um, I feel like we're on a, an upward curve, which is really positive coming into a big series like this one. Um, so... Uh, of course, you look back at experiences like that, and you know you want to take as much out of it as you can. Um, we felt absolutely gutted and raw at the end of it, and um, you know you never want to be that that to lose. You're the one to lose in a big series like like the Ashes, um, but it does make you that little bit more steely, if you like, and desperate to to go out and um, and turn things around this time. Similar sort of theme actually but only just because Ben Stokes was missing in that series how big a difference does it make having him back firstly as a player <laughs> to the team but also as your number two now back as vice captain what does that do for your captaincy um, I think it's it's fantastic to have Ben back and not just Ben back playing but Ben back playing somewhere near his best um, I think it's been coming a long time um, I thought the way he stepped up during big moments throughout that World Cup was you know just him down to a T, really. It's what he does. He's someone that responds well to responsibility and to the big moments. He offers, with all three departments, bats, balls, one of our best fielders. Um, and he drags people with him. He's a natural leader on the field, in the dressing room. Um, he brings a huge amount to the group. And for him to be vice-captain now, again, um, is, is something that, when Joss was made vice-captain, was always... He was always aware that if an opportunity came where he was, Ben was allowed to be put back in that role, um, it would be the case, um, and not in any way detriment to what Joss did. I thought he was brilliant. And, and almost now, I um, feel like we've got another senior player who you know, has earned that respect, as a, 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 who has been vice-captain to, uh, to help lead, a, lead this team, which uh, is so valuable. We've got some world-class players in, in those two. Um, who have proven performers under pressure, not necessarily in, in Test cricket, Ben more so than Joss, but um, you know they they handle they know how to handle big moments, which is good for everyone. Can, can I just ask, did you, you ask to have Ben back as vice captain, or was the offer made to you? He's there if if you, he, we, he's now available to do that job if you'd like him. Um, it's a question I've asked for a long time. Um, 
but it was made available uh, at the end of the World Cup. So, you know, just really pleased to have him back in um, into that role. He's very excited, as you'd imagine him, um, and very much, you know, l l looking forward to to getting out there um, with him as number two. Um, it's a sort of similar point. Does having Ben back actually also affect the way in which you can play your cricket? Uh, you've spoken in the past about, I guess, an, a, po a positive brand of, of cricket, and I suppose we saw a little bit in Sri Lanka about the way you went about things. Does having Ben back allow you to to, to continue that that ethos? In an ideal world, yeah, I think um, that's what suits the the nature of our team. Um, and I think it's important that we always are striving to, to look to win games and not looking at drawing or obviously losing them. Um, but I think it's something that we're constantly looking to improve on is being a little bit more adaptable when we find ourselves in difficult scenarios and difficult positions, and especially with the bat. Um, but, you know, Ben has a, his own way of of getting his message across, something that is very unique and different um, to the rest of the group, but he always gets a, a very good response. And to have someone like that uh, by his side, you know, does fill me with a huge amount of confidence. Um, it wasn't that he wasn't offering that when he wasn't vice captain at all, but I think he's, as I say, he's someone that responds well to to big moments and to added responsibility. And I think we'll see a lot more from him. Um, as the series unfolds. And, and have you had a chance to think about what it would mean to you to be an Ashes winning captain? You know what it's like to win the Ashes, but to, to lead the team to success, have you thought about that? Um, I've dreamt about it uh, from being a, a little boy. And obviously it came more real, having been put in a position to have that opportunity. But not not recently. I'm more focused on making sure that everything's... Uh, you know, we've planned well for it and that we you know are fully prepared for it. And... Uh, start worrying about that if it becomes a reality. Uh, Joe, in the past few days, uh, some people like Ashley Giles have talked about in the past, you know, couple of years, the 50 over World Cup was a real priority and maybe even a, the main priority. Uh, now that this is the start of the Test Championship as well, that the World Cup's been won, is there a feeling that you, there is a refocus, a bigger refocus now on Red Bull cricket? for you? I think it's an exciting time for Test Cricket. I think it's an exciting time for this group. You know, start of a Test Championship, every game counting for something. I think that's a real positive for the game. Um, and, yeah, I think from my point of view, ever since I've been involved in as captain, there's, there's been quite a big focus on Test Cricket um, and trying to make sure that it, it isn't second fiddle, it doesn't feel like second fiddle to anyone involved in it. Um, We've seen that the impact that putting that huge focus has had on the white ball game and you know, resulted in us winning a World Cup. And if more focus is going to be put on Test cricket and we can have similar results, that can only be a positive for English cricket. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see as time unfolds if 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 that's how things are going to go. But um, it doesn't really change the way I'm going to approach things or where the team are going to go. Um, so yeah.